Well, welcome to uh, a special episode of Teology uh, today, where um, instead of I, we have our uh, cups of tea, coffee, and who knows what else, and then copies of the confession here. Um, so I'm joined today, and you've seen them before on Teology, uh, but I'm joined by the Reverend Josh Rieger up in Hexham at Hexham Presbyterian Church, and uh, Reverend Andy Young at Oxford Evangelical Presbyterian Church. So great to have you guys on our uh, special great to joint be episode of Teology. Glad to be with um, you. And so we, we finished chapter six of the fall of man and the punishment thereof, the bad news. And uh, it, it's great to actually have all of you on here today where we, we change track. We, we start to begin with the good news of uh, 7.1, uh, which this is chapter seven. It's of God's covenant with man. And uh, Josh is going to lead us as he reads section one for us uh, today. So why don't you kick us off and then we'll have our short time of discussion. Yeah, that would be great. Uh, chapter 7, paragraph 1 says, The distance between God and the creature is so great that although reasonable creatures do owe obedience unto him as their creator, yet they could never have any fruition of him as their blessedness and reward, but by some voluntary condescension on God's part, which he's been pleased to express by way of covenant. Thanks for that. Yeah, so um, as we begin this uh, chapter on God's covenant with man, uh, it speaks of this relationship. I think it was Herman Bovink that said, uh, the, the Dutch theologian, that, that God um, always relates to man uh, through covenant. And that's what we see here, that as we transition from the sin and the mire and the muck of, of, of the original fall and actual sin, uh, we start to see this uh, good news, um, which will be unfolded through chapter seven. And actually, I'd say over the rest of the confession it is unfolding this wonderful truth of these covenants, which we'll see in section two and section three. Um, but here, just the beginning, that there's a, a relationship that God has um, uh, with us. And, and yeah, it's expressed by the way of covenant, which means this, this, this promise uh, that he has with us. But uh, your guys' thoughts. I, I'm, well, well, and even I'm, as you say relationship, the thing that you're looking at is, and, and you see it in this, begin to see it, there's two ways or two relationships we can have with God. We all have a relationship to God as our creator, which he says here, you know, mm -hmm. we all owe him obedience because he's our creator. He made us. Uh, but as sinners, <laughs> while we owe him obedience, we've rebelled. And, and what we begin to see here in chapter seven, you called it the good news, which is a great way to say it, is there's an alter, an opportunity rather for a second relationship, which is, you know, you could say he's our redeemer, he's he's our covenant king, he, you know, there's different words for it in the scriptures. But, and so that's this, uh, having, having broken that first relationship, we can enter back into a, a, a blessed fellowship with both relationships through this. Right. And then that's really helpful, Josh, and building on that as well. I love that, that expression, voluntary condescension, mm -hmm. that is by some voluntary condescension on God's part. And this is section one of chapter seven is talking about covenant theology in general. It's about to divide up uh, the covenant of works and the covenant of grace. Uh, but we need to remember that the covenant of works is also a voluntary condescension of God that even if Adam had fully obeyed God and kept the covenant of works, it was still an act of voluntary condescension for God to have even begun a relationship with him. Now, we, we specify that in the covenant of grace and say it's a covenant mm -hmm. of grace okay. because Adam has fallen and now it's all of grace. But we need to remember that any relationship of God to his creature, creator-creature relationship, is an act of voluntary condescension and again this is just magnifying god <laughs> you know it's humbling yeah. us but magnifying god well creation itself we creation itself is voluntary condescension isn't it i mean we're not here if it's yeah that's right Right. Yeah, no, I think those are all great points. Um, and it is, uh, again, yeah, as we switch into this good news to realize it's all, uh, again, the confession is always focusing us on God from, from chapter one and onward. And here in, in this relationship, I think, yeah, it, it, it's, it's wonderful to know there is a, a renewed relationship to have. Um, but it's always good to remember that regardless of that relationship, it, it's always voluntary. It's always condescending. Uh, the confession is, is, is trying to really stress to us God. <laughs> right and man, and that we're made after in his image, but rather um, he is still God. Um, and that, that depth between those two is, is uncrossable unless he chooses uh, to do it on his own. Right. Um, 
and just a, a final comment for me is is th this idea of covenant is absolutely integral that when we think about how does god relate to us this is how he does it yeah. theologians talk about architectonic structures and i know that's a polysyllabic <laughs> word and we need to you've got to practice saying it what it's saying is that there's there's a, a macro structure to scripture this is how god relates and it is through covenant chapter seven of the westman's confession of faith is absolutely crucial mm -hmm. you, i hope you can i say absolutely a few more times yeah um, yeah please <laughs> because it gives us this is how god relates it's, it's how he he to adam but also to us in christ covenant of works covenant of grace i just going to go on and say and it's so important to get it's given us a structure of how we relate to god he relates to us and how we understand scripture it's that important brilliant well um we could wax eloquently for the next 30 minutes um if i don't cut us off um <laughs> but uh it's wonderful to have you guys on actually uh this is probably my favorite episode now i've ever done because uh, your comments are great um so big thanks to 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 having you guys here the reason we're doing this together is not that i i, I enjoy your company anyway um, but is because uh later today we're, we're getting all the works uh, everything set up is for zoom utopia 2 with ian hamilton preaching on worship restored and uh, so I do hope everyone who watches this, which I realize this is a small number, but hope all of you are planning to attend uh, this later on in the evening. You'll see all three of us there again, and uh, it should be a wonderful time of hearing the word preached. Um, and so, yeah, we just look forward to seeing you all there. And thanks uh, for joining us for the special episode of Theology. And uh, yeah, cheers, everyone.